Hey everybody, Tim here with another Star Wars review. The Ewok Adventure, also known as the Caravan of Courage. So this came out in 1984, the year after The Return of the Jedi. So at this point, the, the two Ewok movies are kind of known as like the Legends, the Extended Universe, whatever. Most people do not consider them canon. That's fine, whatever. As you guys know, I'm just kind of doing everything. Like if it's been filmed, I'm, I'm doing it. So, and to be honest with you, I actually enjoy both of the Ewok movies. Like, they go way back for me. I actually remember the second one more than the first one. And it's actually one of those things, like, I remember being young and just kind of re knowing, like, there was an Ewok movie and kind of watching it and I knew all about it. And years went by and I was walking through the store and sure enough, there it is, a two-pack DVD set of it. And I was like, I at this point, I had honestly thought that I had just dreamt it up. Like, I had imagined this entire movie. And that's actually happened to me multiple times. Like, for, I think people who kind of grew up in the 80s and the 90s, where like video and DVD was not like a huge thing. And then right in the like early to mid 2000s when they started pumping out everything, you start getting all of these flashbacks. And like, I remember that, like I completely forgot it. Now I remember it. And so I bought the two pack right away and I watched it. And it turns out that I didn't even remember the first one. I was actually only thinking about the second one. So I kind of got to rewatch the first one, basically for the first time as an adult at that point. And it actually kind of stands out. Like I enjoy it. Like it's, it's basically a complete ripoff of like the Hobbit or Lord of the Rings, whichever. But I still actually kind of enjoy it. Probably mostly because it's all nostalgia, but it still kind of has like that charm. Maybe it's just Warwick Davis as Wicket. I don't really know, but I know some people argue, which I don't know why people argue about this, but people argue about where it takes place. Like a lot of people say, oh, this takes place before Return of the Jedi, whereas some people are like, no, it clearly takes place after. But he speaks English, Wicket learns English over the course of the two movies. And it's like, oh no, it's not English. That's why Princess Leia doesn't understand him. Which I mean, I guess like as somebody who's watched Star Trek for years, just because they're speaking English and that's what we're hearing doesn't mean that that's actually the language they're speaking. So whatever language Wicket is learning in these two movies doesn't necessarily mean it's the same language that Princess Leia speaks. So either way, I choose to think that it comes after Return of the Jedi just because the movie itself came after, but that's just me. So a lot of actors actually kind of pop up in this, most notably, besides Warwick Davis, uh, the narrator is Burl Ives. I've said before um, in different reviews, different franchise reviews, um, like my favorite, some of my favorite directors are the Rankin and Bass creators of like the, the Playmation and animated holiday movies like Frosty and... Uh, Rudolph and stuff like that. So obviously as soon as like Burl Ives started talking in the opening scene, like as the narrator, I was like, oh my God, it's Sam the Snowman from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. So I was like, that's kind of great. Which I don't know, Some somebody's probably watching this like, why is that what he thinks of? It is what it is. Uh, the mom is played by uh, Fanula Flanagan, I think is how you say her name. I always butcher her name, which is weird because I've done a lot of reviews that she's been in. She's done like, the Next Generation, she's done Enterprise, she's done Four Brothers, she's done The Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood, The Others, like she's a terrific actress. And so I, at first I didn't even recognize her. Like I actually had to, like, I saw the mom and I was like, who is that? And it wasn't even until the end scene where I was like, holy shit, like is that is that Teensy? And I looked it up online. I was like, sure enough, yep, that's her. So I think that's great. So overall, the movie itself, it is what it is. We see Wicket, we see Mace and Sindel, who like Sindel has not done anything other than these two movies. And I kind of like wish that they would have like kind of gotten her into some of the new movies uh, of seven, eight, and nine. I think it would have been just hysterical like if she would just kind of just walk even just walked by the camera didn't even say anything just walked by it. and like people like me would have been like is that Sindel like what was that so something like that I think would have been great 
So like I said, a lot of it is very Hobbit related. Basically, mom and dad get kidnapped and Mae Sindel and a bunch of the Ewoks, the, the Fellowship of Ewoks, have to go on a journey to save them. They go through all sorts of like adventures, like Mace gets trapped under the water. We get the little light fairy that's like a terrible effect, but it, it works. It is what it is. Uh, the giant spider, the effect of like the giant, which is just a dude walking around in a suit filmed really far away. And then mom and dad in the cage that we have to rescue before they all escape and live happily ever after until the next movie. I enjoy it. Like I said, it's super simple. It's something to just kind of put on, sit back, have a drink and enjoy it. Like, again, you got to think about it. this was 1984. They had just finished the trilogy. We got four, five, and six. We got the holiday special that we don't really talk about. And they were like, hey, what if we do a spinoff? It works for me. Like, I actually think it works. So I know a lot of people don't like it just because of the effects, because of the acting, which a lot of people don't like children actors just because they can't act and stuff like that. It's 1984. They're doing the best they can. And I think they do a terrific job. So for those who have seen it, what did you guys think? Go ahead, let me know, and then I will see you guys again for the Battle for Indoor.